and welcome to Match Fishing TV. And it's a special episode tonight as we're going to be dedicating the first half of the show to discussing the European Championships. And I'm joined in the studio by Tom Scully. Hello. And Joe Carras. Good evening. Well, the Euros, not uh, great for the Brits, not quite the result I think most people are predicting. Definitely not. I mean, TriCast Western Pools Team Wales have won the event, um, 32 points. They haven't actually won a world, a world or European Championship since 1989, so it's the first gold medal um, since then really. Just a fantastic result for a great, great set of guys. <laughs> I was I was actually at that eighty nine performance. I worked for Angling Times at the time, and I, I banked round. It was the year Tom won his World Championship, and I, and I kind of banked round his section second day. But it was the Welsh that everybody was watching. Um, and, and there's no reason why there shouldn't be a powerhouse. You know, obviously they've got a much smaller population than England, a much mm. smaller population of match anglers. Mm. But they fish the same matches as the English lads. They fish, you know, the same methods as the English lads. And it's obviously dropped right from this year. Absolutely. I mean, to give the full result, um, in the team stakes, obviously, um, Wales won it with 32 points. England was second, uh, four points behind on 36 points. Close. Hungary, okay. third, 46 points. And Scotland were actually fourth, and they were only three points behind um, Hungary, so they were on 49 points. So it weren't that far off being a England, Amazing. Wales, a Wales, England, Scotland um, top three. Scotland just missed out on the medal. Mm. I feel very, very sorry for those guys. It, it just shows, though, doesn't it, that the the lag of our canal is very similar fishing to what we do, don't we? Like mm. hard fishing, you know, they're catching a lot of perch, few roach with an odd bream. So it obviously translates that our teams have done really well. From what I've seen of the venue, which is very little, and mostly on Facebook, mostly on the odd video, um, never actually visited it. It looks to me like a big Fendland drain, something mm. like um, the Grey Two's Relief Channel, yeah, um, yeah, or the Little the Ouse at um, Littleport. Yeah, it's not too deep, neither is it? It's only top kit deep. It's not it? that deep. It doesn't flow. It's stood. I mean, they're using okay. fairly light rigs, from what I could gather. Mm. Um, I spoke to Ben Roberts this morning, who obviously fishes for Tricast um, Western Pools team in Wales, and he said using one gram rigs on the long pole, um, you know, to, to target the bream. But I think the key thing, and, and the thing that Wales have got right, really, um, reading between the lines, is, is the feeding, mm. um, which they've done a bit different to everybody else. Um, but also the rigs, they've, they've, a lot of them are fished quite light, you know, sort of 09 hook lengths for these bream, and the big bream, two, two to three kilo bream. They were big weren't they, yeah. Um, and little 18 um, fire match hooks, so little lines, little hooks. There were some big eyed and some big hybrids I saw in some, some of the Some lovely fish as well. rogue fish get, got caught, didn't they? So I think Thomas Walter, who won the event, he got one yesterday. Great big eyed, yeah. lovely fish. And when they get big, they go very, very bronze. Yeah, don't they? yeah. Cracking. Lovely, absolutely awesome. I mean, the team that fished, just to run through, was Darren Frost, Ben Roberts, John Harvey. John Harvey actually won the match on the first day, so he got off to a great start. Ian Leach, Lee Edwards. Um, Nigel Evans was there as well. Um, he was the reserve. Um, maybe he'd come in on the second day if the team hadn't won the first day. But And the manager, of course, was Andy Johnston, um, who's done a great job to really steer the ship to victory. Mm. Yeah, I mean, of those names, Lee Edwards is obviously the standout. Um, individual that we know. I mean, a regular down at Eusha and a regular on. Uh, well, if you weren't well, she'd probably be in the England team. Mm -hmm. um, and I think these guys have, have proven collectively that they have got a hell of a lot of, oh, not, not a lot, they've got a really good top end of the pyramid. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they've got probably a dozen anglers that are more than capable of holding their own. And I, th I think you're right, I mean, we were talking earlier on about sponsorship. It's cost these guys a lot of money to be there, isn't it? Mm, absolutely. It's, um, again, I sort of had a chat with Ben about that this morning. He said the average cost per angler would be probably in excess of £2,000 yeah. to go and fish that. And um, they're very grateful for the support they get. They get help off TriCast and Western Pools um, and also some money off the Welsh Sports Council. But it still costs them about a grand, you know, each. Yeah. Um, plus the time off work and everything, obviously. Yeah. So. You know, huge result, commitment, isn't it? It's a huge commitment, Joe, but I just think a result like that must just make it all Oh, absolutely. Worthwhile. All the hard work, you know, it's just come good, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I spoke to like Lee in the past. It's, it's a ro real roller coaster of emotions. Not this event, but in the past, you know, because sometimes you know, they maybe feel like they haven't quite 
got the funding to do it properly and then they get a result like this and it's just all that will be forgotten, won't it? Definitely. It's not an unusual result, is it? I mean, Wales are there or thereabouts quite regularly. Yeah. Mm. You know, although, it's, as you say, it's the first medal since 89 in, in Bulgaria in the World Championships, um, you know, they have been bubbling under the medal positions for mm. a long, long time. Definitely. Um, and everything's obviously dropped right. Yeah, you need the rub, don't you, in these massive events? You do. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's just something that's come to me then, really. It's, it's no coincidence. I think. The last couple of years, or certainly last year, we've seen a real sort of coming together to both the Scottish and the Welsh yeah. team. For example, the Scottish team travelled down quite a few week weekends to fish the league that me and Matt went on the yeah. on the stadium. You know, it's a two hundred mile plus yeah. road. Coming down, stopping in a hotel, fishing the stadium, which obviously is not dissimilar to the sort of tactics that yeah. you need out there. And um, Welsh team likewise, you know, Darren Frost, Ben Roberts, Ian Leach, all regulars on the canal. Um, so they've it's been putting the miles yeah. in perhaps and doing the right kind of fishing, and I'm just so pleased for them that mm. it's paid off. Um, obviously, England will be disappointed to have been pipped to the to the gold medal. But England did well. Yeah. Um, Matt, who you a couple of weeks ago was sitting in that chair there. Yeah. Um, he, he's, you know, he's best of the Englishmen. It, we all know how good Matt is. Eh? He's just incredible, isn't he? And yeah. I was trying to get a shade of odds on Saturday morning for Matt being European champion. Yeah. Thankfully, nobody took the bet because he he missed out. But. Um, <laughs> He's, uh, was it finished ninth overall? Yeah. Ninth mm -hmm. overall, yeah. And best, best, as you said, best English. Won his overall. section day one. Yeah. Um, so England have blooded some good youngsters this weekend in a senior event. Yeah, Matt Derry fished both days, didn't he? Which is good to see, you know. Um, Lee Kerry and Cameron Hughes also went along. Um, Lee was a reserve and I don't think Cameron quite made it, but it's good to see that Mark Downs and Mark Addy are giving these youngsters a chance to, you know, show how good they are. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's, all, it's all changing. I mean, it's been a, a sort of fairly stable ship, the England team, for the last sort of decade or so, hasn't it? But yeah. I think now, you know, a lot of the more senior members of the team are exactly that. They're getting a little bit older now, and Mark's looking to, yeah. to get you know, the next generation in. Of course, you've got Callum as well, who obviously fishes the world champs, and he, he, he doesn't fish the Europeans, but you know, there's a brilliant future ahead for these guys. The future's well, very we've, bright. We've touched on this before. I think one of the issues with blooding youngsters is that in match fishing as a sport you can go on at your peak yeah. for a very very mm. very long time you know you get into that side you get experience of that type of match um, you know Bob Nudd had a very long England career Kevin Ashurst had a very long England career because the truth of the matter is you can get right the way through to 60 plus mm. and you've still got all your faculties you're still mm. physically capable of of doing what is it other than throwing a pole around, a fairly sedentary <laughs> pursuit. Yeah. yeah. Um, so once you break through, if you want to stay with it, and you still, you know, continue to put the yeah. effort in, you will stay with it. And that's why, yeah, it has taken a long time to start blooding more and more youngsters. But I think the two marks are planning for the future, mm. and they're doing it really well. Definitely. I mean, just one thing on the tactics that England used, which I thought was quite interesting. Um, I had a good chat with Matt about it, and he sort of said, small fish really were the key um, for England, you know. On Friday night, he said there was a lot of uncertainty. They really weren't sure how it was going to be. They didn't feel they'd got a method sorted for the bream, and they didn't particularly feel they'd got a method sorted for the small fish either. So, you know, it wasn't like they went into it confident with a cut and dry method. It was very much a case of, you know, they'd, learned, way into the they'd learned a few things yeah. and they wanted to. But one thing they did feel from practice was that ball and it was essential. They felt that you really pulled everybody else's fish if you chucked yeah, some, you know, some and ground bait in short. Um, and that's what they did. Now, by contrast, Ben Roberts for Wales said the Welsh team all felt that if you balled it, it actually messed up your long line for Bream. When they practised, you know, and they tried it, some people balling it, some people cupping it, and the ones who balled it didn't catch as many Bream. It's interesting. So, so, but it really is fine, fine margins of error because you're not talking about lots of Bream, are you? You're bream. talking about one Bream or yeah. two Bream. You put one Bream or two Bream with your net of small fish and suddenly you're a hero, you won your section. Um, so to, to, to make the decision that that is costing you your one or two bring, mm. that is a big call. Bold move. It was a bold move. And it's paid off. That's it. I mean, you know, Matt sort of said, for England, um, they felt they had the small fish tactics, as it turned out, right come the day, even though they weren't so confident in practice. They said, when you're all sat in a line and you're all doing the same thing, and you're all a bit closer, mm. don't forget that you've got an extra practice person in your little area. So you basically, there's one peg in five taken out from the match day. Yeah. Um, you know, he said, I think the blood of experience that England had got really paid off. And they had the top small fish weight in just about every mm. section. Um, but obviously, the one thing that Wales had that England didn't was these breeds. So did that feeding tactic on the short line cost England? 
Uh, mm. Very well done to the Welsh. Okay, we're going to take a short break and uh, we're back in a couple of minutes. Welcome back. And in the second half of this week's show, we'll be looking at the Packington Summers Festival, the Thames Summer League, Census Canal League, and there's a couple of Evesham results to get across. Um, Joe, Packington Festival should really have been on last week's show. Yeah, it was. Um, but it's worth a mention. It is worth a mention because it fished its brains out. Um, loads and loads of fish got caught. In fact, the venue record went twice in the same same festival, so I'll just show you how well it fished. I mean, Steve Daly had £229 on Little Gearies, all F1s with an odd cart. Brilliant fishing. I mean, it was no surprise, though, who won the festival. Dan Trezine won the festival. I mean, he does awesome there. Doesn't he? Every he does. single week, he seems to win a match there. Um, just a great, great few days fishing. Definitely. I mean, the thing with Packington is that I know John Virtual really well, the owner, he's, he's a great guy. He's really trying to sort of um, rejuvenate the venue, isn't he? Yeah. It's, it's quite a, obviously a historical commercial now, Packington. It's been around certainly as long as I've been, mm. uh, been fishing. And it's always got a bit of an appeal to natural venue angles as well, because it's got a lot of silverfish in there, skimmers. Yeah. But what he's done now with some of the lakes is he's really stuck the F1 hybrids in there, and they're um, coming on a treat. And mm. you know, we've got it for the final of our Veterans Championship in a couple of weeks, um, so I'm sure that the vets will all be interested in this result, you know. It's, I think it's going to be a great final. It's always been one of them venues, Packington, hasn't it, where it's sort of 50 to 100 pound weights, but all of this year, it, the weights have gone through the roof. Definitely. Uh -huh. Good fishing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, third round of the Oxford Summer League. This sounded like a great match. Um, it was on the river between Dorchester and Benson, um, which is obviously a bit further downstream to the normal stretches at... It um, sounds Oxford. posh, doesn't it? It does sound posh. Sounds like somewhere we could live. <laughs> Um, the winner was Ian Young. Uh, he was actually second uh, in, the, in the match I fished on the Thames Summer a couple of weeks ago, and so really consistent on that. And we had £15 four ounce. He did draw an MPEG though at Dorchester. Um, Which always helps. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he caught a lot of small perch and chub uh, on, on chop worm on the pole. And then he's caught some roach on hemp as well. So he's had a, a lovely day, £15 four. Uh, second was Towner, as they call him, Steve Townsend. He's a re another regular in the frame. Yeah, in the frame last week, match. didn't he? Um, he had £12.1, um, he's caught £7 of roach and £5 of bleak on the whip and um, he's caught some better fish on hemp as well, so he's had a, a good weight. And the last in the frame was Mark Harrington, um, he caught four big perch and some smaller fish on chopped worms, so he's had a nice day. But what's noticeable from this week's result, no breed. No, no there's a bit of colour, colours dropped out of it and I mean, on, on the Thames, generally, somebody's going to sit on some ring, mm. and obviously this week it's not happened. No, no. It was interesting on the match I fished, though, um, Paul Lanfield was sort of telling me that they don't seem to feed as prevalently as they always used to. You know, they really did show well that day, but they said this is the exception, you know. Okay. Um, and I think that makes it better, Roger, because to me, you know, a, a close match where you may be going to catch the odd green, but you're looking yeah. for a net of roach yeah. and bleak, makes yeah. for a much better day's fishing, doesn't it? Yeah. No, it's, yeah, it's, it makes for a for want of a, a better word, a fairer match then. I'll tell you what though, if I sit on that Drenna knockout cup and, if, and catch a load of bream, I ain't complaining. No, no, no. <laughs> a few <laughs> flat lads. <laughs> 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 Tips doing that. <laughs> they will be more than welcome. welcome. Yeah, okay. Um, Southern Canal League. Well, I mean, other than the Wales result, this result really caught my eye. £56 won the Canal League match on the Grand Union. What a day's fishing that must have been <laughs> for Jimmy Gibbs. I mean, 
A lot of bream on the pole, but I mean, you don't hear many weights like that on canals, do you? Not no. at all. Yeah. Not at all. Um, I think it was a late, late in town stretch that they used. It was a different mm. bit of the Grand Union for every round of this, I'm led to believe. Um, they had 56.12, Jimmy did. The runner up, Alan Robinson, had £34. So that's not a bad day's sport either, is it? I mean, like, I mean, we've spoken about the Grand Union many a time, haven't we? And it's just full of skimmers, isn't it? And it really is good fishing, if, you know, if you get on the right bits. Definitely, definitely. The bloke in third place caught my eyes. Well, he, he won some money on that canal over the years, hasn't Richard he? Richard Latimer. Yeah. Makes some brilliant floats mm. as well. I don't know if he still does them, but... He still does. Lat yeah, Latimer's were always the Grand Union Canal float mm. to go for. Definitely. He was third with, with uh, £19.9, so he's not had a bad day either. But um, <laughs> just to round up the, um, the team result on the day, Browning Nuts, so I'm guessing it's Browning Northamptons. Abbreviated into nuts, I had 52 <laughs> points. Black House, uh, Black House, Black Horse, Black had 42 points, and Image uh, were third with 38 points. In the league states, it keeps things fairly close. Um, so Black Horse leading the race with 131, um, Oakwood Purple second on 127, and Browning Nuts on 124. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, that's a really close league, isn't it? Definitely. Now let's talk about Evesham. Yes, we've got a kick off. There's been a little bit of controversy out there, Roger, on Facebook. There's been a lot of controversy. Um, I mean, obviously, we've got uh, a, a couple of match results to get through, but I'm, a lot of people don't know it's me that's getting the stick, but indirectly, it is me that's getting the stick. Um, down on Evesham Town, the, there, are, there are two pegs that are, that are not very nice. You don't want to draw them. Peg, I mean, to be honest, there's more than two pegs that you don't want to draw. But three, peg three and peg four, right at the top end of the Crown Meadow, they've had a reputation for years as being, you know, th th these are dead pegs. Mm. You don't want to be on them. There tends to be a lot of weed on them. They're, they're on the um, outside and bend. The flow pushes away. They are difficult to fish. And the locals um, don't like them being used in matches. My view, organising the Evesham Festival, is if you're going to leave out three and four, you might as well start your pegging at five. Mm. Suddenly, you're starting your pegging a quarter of the way, or yeah, a quarter of the way through Crown Meadow. Um, yeah. Missing out one and two are very, very good. But you put people on one and two, and then on peg five, one and two are pleasure fishing. So um, we've said for a couple of years that we need to use three and four. Three and four don't, if they don't get fished, they definitely can't win a match. Mm. You know, they, they, nobody can work out how to fish them because nobody's fishing them. Mm. Um, and I know that Dai has been pressurised, Dai and Raphael has been pressurised into um, leaving them out on more and more of the qualifiers, despite the fact that the Festival Steering Committee, of which I'm a member, has said they need to be in. Mm -hmm. And if they're not in, nobody can do anything about them. You know, you're just going to be ignoring the fact that you've got this black hole in the middle of the match game <laughs> that nobody wants to be on. So. Um, that's the reason that they're, they're in. They're in because the spectators want to see somebody every 15 or 20 yards. They don't want to see a couple of blokes then a 100 yard walk to, mm. to the third boat. Um, it's, it's right though, Roger. I mean, I, I always took quite an independent view on this on the grounds that I didn't actually know the river that well. But looking to it objectively this year, what you're saying about three and four not being great pegs. Well, peg three, I believe, has actually won a match this year. Because you've got to fish it totally different. You've got, Harris, fish, you've got to catch a big fish. As one with a barbell. Now, you mentioned three and four being left out. It was actually left out in the team, the first of the team qualifiers. Tom Potter, for us, luckily, drew peg two. The number of fish in his peg was quite, was unbelievable because mm. he's basically got a hundred yards gap. Yeah, yeah. Down the, and he, he really like, mullered that, that first section with sort of six and a half pounds. I think second was about. You'd have to start at five, wouldn't you? Yeah. And so. Now, if you start at peg five, you know, if you start all those matches at peg five and you start the festival at peg five, the problem is that you're starting. The most important pegs, as far as the festival weekend are concerned, are those on Crown Meadow and Corporation Meadow. Mm. You want as many of the 70 pegs in those first 40. Because mm. pegs one to 40 is Evesham DA water, 41 and higher mm. is Dyes Huxley water. Mm. Um, to my way of thinking, pegs 1 to 40 are key to the event as a spectator event. Now, if you want to leave them out and not have it as a spectator event, we'll all go home. I've got holiday for August Bank Holiday Weekend. I've not had a holiday August Bank Holiday Weekend for about 30 years because of the Asian Festival. Mm. But to me, the spectators, the people that come and want to walk up and down Crown Meadow and see people fishing, they're the people that matter the most. And that's why 
I am so insistent on them being used. I think peg three is a really good peg, isn't it? Because the ice cream van always parks at the back of it. Every time I end up walking down, it's not. For you don't want to draw it, but there's an awful lot of pegs on natural rivers that you don't want to draw. Mm. Um, and so, That's fishing, isn't it? Yeah. Um, we'll we'll see how it goes. But, but what I have said, what I have said is that if anybody um, wins between now and the festival, if anybody wins their ten peg section, I'm not talking by default. So I'm not. You know, I'm talking about if somebody else can win their section from three or four, I will make sure they get invited to next year's event. So they've got that first ten pegs now, the blokes on peg three and four have got a, an additional reason. They might be sitting out there for one big barble, but they've got an additional reason for giving it everything. And let's not forget, a few years ago, um, Sam had a, a decent weight up there. He broke five pound on the long pole. Damned hard work. But he did it. More than five pounds came up on Saturday. Didn't yeah, it? Richard Reynolds had five pounds off it this yeah, weekend. On Saturday. So. <sighs> anyway, I'm, there I'm we are. Okay. So, we've had a couple of qualifiers. Um, Trevor Chalk, nice to see him get through on the Evesham one. Yeah, uh, he drew peg 11, he had 11 pound four. Darren Davis was second with 10 pound one. And Dave Partridge third with 9 pound 12. Um, which meant that Darren Davis, Dave Partridge and Andy Bruton all made it through to the final. Well, that makes it ever so interesting, mm. you see, because Darren, um, Darren hadn't been invited to the Saturday, and Darren was first name on our reserve list. So yeah, well done, him. Darren. Hey, you, you, yeah, that's a brilliant result. <laughs> awesome. Uh, on the Sunday, um, Jamie Robbins actually won the match with ten thirteen. I was particularly pleased for Jamie because he actually went on the Trent on the Riverfest qualifier, um, but he didn't get on. Um, he went up on spare, so he, so he phoned um, Jen at Evesham and said, oh, Have you got a cancellation? Have you got a, a spare yeah. peg? You know, she said, yes, I'll draw you one. Drew him peg, peg one, which is always welcome, isn't it? Won and he match. caught 10 13 and won the match. Brilliant. Rich Reynolds second with £10.8 off peg 38, and Andrew Baines third with £9.4 off peg 83. And your qualifiers were Jamie Robbins, Nick Young, and Andrew Baines. Okay, so I don't think we mentioned, do we mention the, the qualifiers on the Evesham? Dave Partridge was through? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, okay, I'm going to sleep. It's fish well though, isn't it, there? Yeah, it's been it, decent. Really. It's been good again. I mean, I'd, I'd noticed recently there's been quite a lot of perch in the results. Mm. People have been targeting fish other than roach. Perch and eels, a lot of people. Mm. Perch and eels, um, and obviously fishing like that, any odd bonus fish can turn up as well. You can tell, can't you, because you, like your Pete Jays and your Joe Oaks, they're not framing at the moment, so there's other fish getting caught. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah, so. Your hemp okay. anglers. No doubt the roach will be feeding ravenously by the bank holiday week. <laughs> well, we As they always do. Get yeah. some blood in it, I'll sort it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, that's us done for this week. I won't be around uh, next week. I'm going on my holidays, so Alex Bones, I guess, will be in this chair. Um, and he'll be talking about the uh, fact that the Dial Pole Fishing Masters DVD is out, or is that going to be out this week? No, that's actually going to be out, Rog, on Wednesday this week. Um, yes, so we've got a, a freebie. Freebie for you. Um, 50 plus page digital magazine, hour plus um, video, all about the event with some tips for some top anglers. So if you want to get onto that, just check out the Pole Fishing Magazine website, which is www.polefishingmagazine.com from Wednesday onwards, and there'll be a link to, to where you can view it totally free. Okay, and then next week we're going to be talking about the Bugley Festival on the River Severn um, and the results from the Lindo Festival, uh, Evesham Team Championship Qualifier and loads more. So I won't be here, but uh, the guys will see you next week. See you then. See you later.